This science is very young. There is so much we don't yet know about how kids can grow up to like themselves and learn to like other people, to, to have an open mind, to get over setbacks and failures. We're just at the beginning. Since there have been people, there has been this question of, you know, how do I grow up to be the person that I'll be proud of and who can, you know, be a positive influence on other people? I think what's new is the approach of, of using the scientific method, of, of using scientific insights into this ancient question. Character is the word that Aristotle used to describe growing up to live a good life, to live a life that is truly, in every sense of the word, good. Good for you, good for other people. And for this to happen, kids need grown-ups. They need parents and teachers, coaches, aunts and uncles to help them to develop into the people they need to be. To us, it means kids developing strengths of heart like gratitude and kindness and honesty, strengths of mind like curiosity and creativity and intellectual humility, and then finally strengths of will like grit, self-control, and optimism. Character Lab had this project, this you know, ambition that we would help kids become the people that we knew that they could be. The question is, how do you do that? Our bet is on science. We try to enable scientists to do more research in schools with kids. We also try to communicate better with parents and teachers so that when those scientific insights come to fruition, there is a way to access them. So if you're a mom or a teacher or a dad, you have a way of understanding, oh, this is how gratitude works. This is what encourages gratitude. You know what? This is what I'm going to do today when I see this child that I love. This science is very young. There is so much we don't yet know about how kids can grow up to like themselves and learn to like other people, to, to have an open mind, to get over setbacks and failures. We're just at the beginning. So to me, the future is to make the science of character development a full flourishing science that isn't just oh, one or two studies here, you know, one or two findings there so that the researchers who work on humility are actually talking to the people who work on growth mindset, and they're talking to the people who work on grit and self-control and optimism, and that finally all these scientists, they're actually talking to parents, and they're talking to teachers, and that there's a real meaningful dialogue between the science and the practice of character development. Intellectual humility means understanding what you don't know, recognizing that you're not always right. It feels like you're right. It always feels like you're right. But that reality in your head is a subjective reality. And therefore, it's a very good thing to listen to what other people have to say, especially when they disagree with you. Intellectual humility, like all character strengths, is a malleable thing. It's not Either you have it or you don't. Either you're going to be this way forever or you're not. Intellectual humility grows with experience and with guidance. It's no secret that our country is going through trauma. There's a rift that seems to grow wider every day. So where do we go from here? I mean, one very pessimistic view is that we'll never come together again. But I have an optimistic view, and that is that intellectual humility will bring us together again, because it's by empathizing and listening to the other side, by saying, what I hear you expressing is the following. Do I have that right? And for a moment, really trying to put yourself in that other person's shoes, I think we can actually at least begin to appreciate you know, where it is that we, we disagree, and maybe we'll find that there is more common ground than we realized at first.